I have short Keeling, um, and this is my partner Lawrence Britton, who rode for the South African men's pair, and we'll be in Rio today in August. Uh, hi, I'm Lawrence Britton, and I rode in the men's heavyweight pair on our way to Rio with uh, Sean Keeling. Uh, the next eight, eight weeks are pretty much all on camp and uh, just training. No, there's going to be nothing else. Train, eat, sleep, recover. <laughs> You guys are high-performance athletes, uh, elite athletes, um, massive amounts of sacrifice that goes into one or two races at an Olympic Games. Give us an indication of what those sacrifices are. Well, I mean, like uh, Lauren said, the rowing takes all our time. I mean, you're looking for the extra inches there. So, I mean, and like I said, in the next eight weeks, just working on literally centimeters of, of pushing the body and getting longer on, on our stroke. And uh, I mean, you don't see your family much, you don't see your friends much. You train twice, three times a day. I mean, it does, that sounds horrible, but it actually is what we want to do. I mean, when I mean, you, I mean, you do get to see people, it's great, but uh, I mean, we want to achieve that gold, that gold medal in Rio, so it's actually all worth it in the end. Why do you work so well together? Uh, I think, uh, you know, the pair is quite a unique uh, boat where you're each in control of one side of the boat and you have to work perfectly together to, to make the boat go straight and, and to, to race together. But uh, each have, we each have our unique roles. Sean is the technician up in the front and then I'll just bring all the muscle and make sure I pull him down the track. And uh, yeah, but it's, a, it's quite a relationship and it's tricky and but we seem to work quite well together. We rode uh, in 2013 and 2012, try to qualify for, for London and then now we're back in the boat together and it's going really well, much better than last time. Weather conditions, does that play a major role in, in your preparations? Is there a way that you can simulate what you're going to be expecting from a, from a conditional point of view? I, it's hectic in rowing because the, the water is always changing and I mean it affects the boat in a big way. So yes, you can simulate it, but it's hard to go and find the exact conditions that might be there during the racing. I think the, the mental, that's what gets you through all the training, the mental strength that you have. It's, it's what makes you able to do all the, other, all the other hard work. So, and when you come down to that race, it's, it's a six minute uh, effort and it's, it really is hard. It really hurts. And you have to have the mental strength to be able to push yourself for that little bit extra when the crew next to you is starting to move a bit. You know, in rowing, there's, you're not, you've, you can't affect the other crew at all. You have your lane, they have their lane. And you, it's all about putting yourself out there and, and focusing in your lane and pushing, pushing yourself further. You can't really do anything to make the other guy go slower. So I think that's where the mental strength comes in so much. And throughout the race, is there any point in time when you physically become very aware of the, the competitors? I think the whole the whole race you you're aware of them and I mean you come out the blocks there's only six lanes wide so you you can see where the where the rest are. Um, Sean keeps his head in the boat in, in the lane. He's got to steer and then I'll look out a little bit and tell him where we are and where we're moving and and how we're doing through the race as it unfolds. Yes, on that yard, it's not a it's not a time trial. I mean, at the end of the day, you've got to beat the people that are next to you. So you have to be quite aware of what's going on. And again, that is Lawrence's job. And then you just move, you try and move with them and a bit faster than obviously mm -hmm. <laughs> to get a shot. Uh, so I mean I've had the Olympic dream forever and then when I got diagnosed with cancer in October 2014 it, it was a big shock. I think it put me back and and then I and I, I mean I completely forgot almost about the rowing for a bit as I went through the chemo and through the treatment and then. You know, as we got towards the, uh, in February, as the chemo started to to get to towards its end, and the doctors were happy, then that's when we could really start to look back at the rowing. And I think it was just I was just excited to get back in the boat. And then, yeah, the year, the year just went on so well. Last year, we ticked all the boxes right. We came back to training really well, executed the training well, and could feel then that I was that that I was healthy and and getting the results that we wanted to get from before. And then now this year coming back into the pair and, and going to the games, is, oh, it feels like a dream almost. The, the, yeah, the way it feels now is, I can't believe it. <laughs> it's actually very funny at the start there when you think about it, because then you build up to this moment and then the, the umpire is counting down the minutes and then you're thinking, why can't there be a few more minutes <laughs> before this race is going to start? And then you're watching a little robot anticipating with your body for the green light to go. So that's actually quite, a, quite an experience. Quite something, to, yeah. yeah. It's quite yeah. different to what you would think it would be. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, obviously the adrenaline's running um, and you're just ready to, ready so to you're go. You're ready to explode, basically. Okay.